زحمت دی ہے کیونکہ آپ کے سامنے آج ہم یہ پیش کر رہے ہیں یہ ڈاسیئر یہ ڈاسیئر ہے جس میں مقبوضہ کشمیر میں جو انسانی حقوق کی مسلسل خلاف ورزی ہو رہی ہے اس ڈاسیئر میں اس کا ایک خلاصہ ہے ایک تجزیہ ہے انسانی حقوق کی خلاف ورزی مقبوضہ کشمیر میں کوئی نئی بات نہیں ہے یا کوئی نئی روایت نہیں ہے لیکن پچھلے چھ سالوں میں جب سے بی جے پی کی آر ایس ایس ہندوتوا سوچ کی سرکار دلی پر قابض ہوئی ہے اس نے ایک نئی شدت اختیار کر لی ہے اور آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ وائلیشنز میں مسلسل اضافہ ہوتا چلا جا رہا ہے آج ہم بیٹھے ہیں تو ملٹری سیج کو سات سو انہتر دن بیت چکے ہیں آج کیفیت یہ ہے کہ تقریباً نو لاکھ کے قریب آج بھی ہندوستان کی افواج ان کی بارڈر سیکیورٹی فورس پیرا ملٹری کے جو ان کے حضرات ہیں وہ قابض ہیں وہ مقبوضہ کشمیر پر مسلط ہیں اور جو ان کا رویہ ہے وہ کسی سے پوشیدہ نہیں ہے پہلی ستمبر حریت کے رہنما سید علی گلانی صاحب طویل علالت کے بعد اور ایک عرصہ دراز قید و بند میں رہنے کے بعد وہ اپنے خالق کی حقیقی سے جا ملے ان کا انتقال ہوا آپ نے دیکھا کہ اس انتقال پر ہندوستان کی حکومت افواج کی سوچ کیا تھی ان کے گھر کے تمام راستے بند کر دیے گئے خاردار تار بچھا دیے گئے سری نگر میں کرفیو کا سما تھا ان کی جو جست خاکی ہے ان کے گھر کو گھیرے میں لیا گیا ان کے جست خاکی کو قبضے میں لیا گیا زبردستی چھینا گیا ان کی خواہش کے مطابق اور جو جگہ ان نے متعین کی تھی اپنے دفتانے کی اس کے برعکس انہیں دفن کیا گیا رات کی تاریکی میں جنازے میں ان کی جو فیملی کے ممبرز ہیں عزیز و اقارب ہیں ان کو شامل ہونے کی اجازت نہیں دی گئی اور ایک اس قد اور اس اتنی بڑی شخصیت کا جب وصال ہوتا ہے تو ان کے شیان شان جو ایک بنیادی حق ہے کفن اور دفن کا وہ بھی اس سے محروم رہے یہ کیفیت دیکھ کر میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ ہر کشمیری چاہے وہ مقبوضہ کشمیر میں رہتا ہے چاہے وہ آزاد کشمیر میں ہے چاہے وہ دنیا کے کسی کونے میں ہے اس کا دل ٹہل گیا ہر پاکستانی اس اس افسوسناک واقعے کے بعد جو ہے وہ اس کو بے پناہ کرب میں تھا اور تکلیف ہوئی ہم نے فیصلہ کیا کہ اس وقت جو وہاں کیفیت ہے اور جس قسم کی جس سوچ کی حکومت وہاں غالب ہے ہمیں اپنا کردار ادا کرنا چاہیے اور یہ جو دنیا کی سو کال لارجسٹ ڈیموکریسی کا دعویٰ کرنے والی حکومت ہے اس کا اصلی چہرہ دنیا کے سامنے رکھنا چاہیے اسے بے نقاب کرنا چاہیے لوگوں کو بتانا چاہیے کہ یہ کہتے کیا ہیں اور یہ کرتے کیا ہیں ان کے جو دو اس کا جو ان کا جو دوسرا رخ ہے وہ ہم لوگوں کے سامنے رکھیں اب اس کے لیے وہاں تو آزادانہ ذرائع ہے نہیں رسائی ہے نہیں آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ مسلسل جو کمیونیکیشن بلیک آؤٹ ہے وہ جاری ہے آپ نے دیکھا کہ جو انڈیپینڈنٹ جرنلسٹ ہیں یا آبزرورز ہیں ان کو رسائی نہیں دی جاتی دے ہیو نو ایکسیس آپ نے دیکھا کہ حقائق جو ہیں ان کو توڑ موڑ کر پیش کیا جاتا ہے اور دبایا جاتا ہے لوگوں تک منظر عام تک حقائق آنے نہیں دیے جاتے 
آپ نے دیکھا کہ ہم آ قسم کی جو بروٹیلٹیز ہیں دے گو ان رپورٹڈ بائی ڈیزائن پتا ہے کہ ہو رہا ہے بائی ڈیزائن دے گو ان رپورٹڈ اب آج کی دنیا میں انسانی حقوق کا پرچار ہوتا ہے اس کو ایک سینٹر جو سینٹر اسٹیج پہ ہے اس کا تذکرہ ہوتا ہے اور انسانی حقوق کو اس انداز میں پامال کرنا میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ نامناسب ہے چنانچہ ہم نے یہ ایک ڈاسیئر آپ کے سامنے رکھا ہے اور آپ دیکھیں گے اس ڈاسیئر میں ایک سی ڈی بھی ہے تاکہ وہ بھی آپ استعمال کر سکتے ہیں آپ کے لیے آسانی ہو جائے گی اور یہ اس کی جو وائڈ ڈسیمنیشن ہے اس میں کارآمد ہوگی یہ بار کوڈ ہے اس کے ذریعے بھی آپ آسانی سے اس کو ڈاؤن لوڈ بھی کر سکتے ہیں اور اس کو اس کا مطالعہ بھی کر سکتے ہیں اب اس کا میں مختصر جائزہ آپ کو پیش کرتا ہوں مختصراً یہ ہے کہ یہ ایک سو اکتیس صفوں پر محیط ہے یہ ڈاسیئر اس کے تین چیپٹرز ہیں ایک چیپٹر جو ہے اس میں تذکرہ ہے جو وار کرائمز ہیں جو ہندوستان کی افواج وہاں کمٹ کر رہی ہیں اور جینوسائڈل ایکٹس جو ہیں جو انڈین آکوپیشن فورسز جو انہوں نے کیے ہوئے ہیں اس کا تذکرہ ہے اس کے دوسرے چیپٹر میں یہ جو آئے دن پروپاگینڈا کیا جاتا تھا کہ یہاں تو سب کچھ نارمل ہے باہر سے چیزیں مسلط کی جاتی ہیں اس میں ذکر کیا گیا ہے کہ کس طرح ان کی حرکتوں سے ان کی پالیسی سے کشمیری نالا ہوئے ہیں اور اب وہ جو ایک انڈیجنس موومنٹ جو ہے ریزسٹنس کی موومنٹ جو ہے وہ جنم لے رہی ہے اس میں آپ کا بھلا ہو جو فالس فلیگ آپریشنس کا تذکرہ ہے اور اس ایک اور چیپٹر جو تیسرا چیپٹر ہے اس میں جو سلامتی کاؤنسل کی قرار دادے ہیں جو روح ہے سارے مسئلے کا ان کو کس طرح پامال کیا جا رہا ہے ان کو کس طرح ان کی نفی کی جا رہی ہے اور انٹرنیشنل لاز ہیومینیٹیرین لاز اور جو اپنا ڈیموگرافک ریسٹرکچرنگ کی ان کی مضمون کوشش ہے کہ ایک مسلم اکثریت علاقے کو اقلیت میں تبدیل کرنا اس میں اس کا ذکر ہے پھر میں یہ بھی کہتا چلوں کہ لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ جی اور جی ایسے ڈاسیئر تو پیش کیے جاتے ہیں یہ تو ایک پروپاگینڈا کا ٹول ہے نہیں آپ جب اس کو دیکھیں گے اور میں آپ سے شیئر کرنا چاہ رہا ہوں کہ اس میں جو حوالے دیے گئے ہیں ایک سو تیرہ حوالے ہیں اس ڈاسیئر میں اور اگر ان حوالوں کا آپ ملاحظہ جب آپ کریں گے تو آپ کو اندازہ ہوگا کہ اس میں پاکستان کی سورسز بہت لمیٹڈ ہیں اکثریت جو ہے مٹیریل اور جو حوالے ہیں جو ریفرنسز ہیں وہ کہاں سے لیے گئے ایک سو تیرہ میں سے چھبیس تو ایسے ہیں جن کا تعلق انٹرنیشنل میڈیا کی اسسمنٹس ہیں اور ان کی اپنی رپورٹنگ ہے اور جس میں ایسے ادارے ہیں جس میں بی بی سی ہے جس میں نیو یارک ٹائمز ہے جس میں گارڈین ہے الجزیرہ ہے پھر اکتالیس حوالے ایسے ہیں جن کی سورس انڈین ہے یہ پاکستانی پروپیگینڈا نہیں ہے یہ انڈین سورس ہے اور اس میں آپ دیکھیں کہ اس میں ہندوستان کا میڈیا کی اس میں ریفرنسز ہیں اور ان کے تھنک ٹینکس گائے بگاہے جو ان کے تھنک ٹینکس کہتے رہے ہیں اس کا تذکرہ ہے اور پھر آپ دیکھیں بتیس حوالے ایسے ہیں جو انٹرنیشنل ہیومن رائٹس آرگنائزیشن سے جن کا تعلق ہے اور آرگنائزیشن کون سی ایمنسٹی انٹرنیشنل ہے ہیومن رائٹس واچ ہے اور اس قسم کی جو جو امپورٹنٹ آرگنائزیشن ہیں ان کا تذکرہ ہے پاکستان کے جو حوالے ہیں وہ صرف چودہ ہیں ایک سو تیرہ میں سے تو واٹ آئی ایم سینگ از کہ یہ یہ بڑی محنت سے ایک کریڈبل ڈاکومنٹ ہے بنایا گیا ہے جو ہم آپ سے شیئر کرنا چاہ رہے ہیں اب اس میں پندرہ آڈیو انٹرسیپٹس ہیں آف دی انڈین آکوپیشن فورسز ان کی گفتگو ہے وہ سنائی بھی جائے گی آپ دیکھ بھی لیں گے اور دس کے قریب کلپس ہیں ویڈیو جو کہ آن گراؤنڈ رپورٹس ہیں جو انٹرنیشنل میڈیا کی مرتب کی ہوئی رپورٹس ہیں ان کا حوالہ ہے تین ہزار چار سو بتیس کیسز ہیں آف وار کرائمز جن کو پیش کیا گیا ہے ایک ہزار ایک سو اٹھائیس ان لوگوں کی نشاندہی کی گئی ہے جو ان وار کرائمز کو مرتب کرنے میں ڈائریکٹلی ملوث ہیں اور یہ معمولی لوگ نہیں ہیں 
इसमें एक मेजर जनरल लेवल का ऑफिसर है इसमें कम से कम पांच ब्रिगेडियर्स हैं इसमें चार आई हैं सात डी हैं एक कर्नल्स हैं और एक के करीब मेजर्स और कैप्टन्स हैं ये और फिर इसके साथ साथ 118 यूनिट्स का तस्करा किया गया है वो यूनिट जो इन इंसानी हकूक को पामाल करने में डायरेक्टली खुद मुलविस रहे हैं और इन्वॉल्व रहे हैं अब जब आप इसको एग्जामिन करेंगे तो आप देखेंगे हम किस्म की अट्रॉसिटीज का इसमें जिक्र है मावरा अदालत कत्ल जिसको आप एक्स्ट्रा जुडिशल किलिंग्स कहते हैं आर्बिट्री अरेस्ट हैं टॉर्चर है पेलेट गन इंजरीज का आप सुनते रहे हैं आप लिखते भी रहे हैं उसके हकायक हैं रेप एंड यू नो वायलेटिंग यू नो जो खातन की बेहरमती हुई है उसका जिक्र है और फिर एक लाख के ज्यादा ऐसे केसेस है बच्चों के जो कि इनकी आ, हरकतों की वजह से इनके जुल्म और बरबरीत की वजह से यतीम हुए अमलाक हैं जिनको दानिश्ता तौर पर नुकसान पहुंचाया गया डिस्ट्रॉय किया गया एक लाख से तो ज्यादा ऐसी अमलाक का तस्करा है जो कि कॉर्डन एंड सर्च ऑपरेशन में जिनको जलाया गया जिनको गिराया गया और लोगों को नुकसान पहुंचाया गया इरिफ्यूटेबल एविडेंस की बुनियाद पर जो फॉल्स फ्लैग ऑपरेशन हैं फेक इनकाउंटर्स किस तरह किए जाते हैं पाकिस्तान को बदनाम करने के लिए मलाइन किस तरह किया जाता है और इसके साथ साथ किस तरह असला प्लांट किया जाता है रखा जाता है मासूम लोगों पर और फिर उनको मनसूब किया जाता है क्योंकि ये किसी के आलाकार बने हुए हैं ताकि जो रेजिस्टेंस पीसफुल रेजिस्टेंस पोलिटिकल मूवमेंट है कश्मीरियों की उसको हार्म किया जाए उसको नुकसान पहुंचाया जाए ये इनका ये एक पूरा एक डिजाइन है और इस डॉसियर में हमने उस डिजाइन को बेनकाब करने की एक दयानत दराना कोशिश की है अब मैं दरखास्त करूंगा हमारे जो स्पोक्स पर्सन है आजम इफ्तार साहब ये इस डॉसियर का एक खुलासा एक जिस्ट आपके सामने रखते हैं आसिम thank you foreign minister ladies and gentlemen as the foreign minister has said the scale of uh, war crimes and atrocities and indian human rights violations in the indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir are so great that there is a great need to make the world more aware of it and for the world to take more action and do more to bring an end to this series of grave human rights violations in indian occupied jammu and kashmir this dossier is a step in that direction and i shall present from this dossier some details of indian war crimes and human rights violations and incriminating evidence related to indian fake encounters and false flag operations firstly the genocidal acts while there are innumerable accounts of these barbaric acts testimonies of 1747 victims since 2014 have been included in the dossier i invite you to listen to this audio clip from july 2020 wherein two indian army officers were heard discussing about torture of 40 innocent kashmiris which resulted in the death of two kashmiris while locals were threatened throughout night raids to prevent them from raising their voice basic thing was jo 40 bande jo kutai hui hai sabhi sarar mein aur mein for the last 15 days and ultimately these two uh, heroes of their have died correct so ab dar to paida hoga abhi tak to inko inhone dekha nahi tha aur kya kar sakti hai ha to abhi fauj mein kya kar sakta hai fauj ka taakat dekh le inhone jinhone bhi dekha nahi tha something happened raat ko unko khane and police wale bhi sare the to unhone bhi garam kar rakha tha 
कि अगर किसी ने कुछ मुंह फालतू में मुंह खोला रात को आएंगे एंड फौज भी आ रखी है which is another tragic aspect of the situation in IIOJK 8652 unidentified mass graves have been discovered in 89 villages of six districts of occupied Kashmir investigations revealed that 154 graves had two bodies while 23 graves had up to 17 bodies each new york times reported that 574 persons buried in mass graves as foreigners were identified as residents of IIOJK while indian government continue to deny requests for the dna testing of the bodies 17 bodies were found in a grave at kanener kalaras graveyard of kupwara now these were all members of a family who were killed when the indian forces blasted their house using explosives this video clip that we are going to show you is of mr ata muhammad a grave digger of district baramula who is testifying burial of unidentified dead bodies in several graveyards ata muhammad 68 years of age grave digger and caretaker at jehel bimiar in baramula district testified to burying 203 bodies on a hillside adjacent to the Jhelum river between 2002 to 2006 it was in 2003 when he was forced to bury two mutilated bodies killed in fake encounter by indian forces khoon saaf kiya hothon se aankhon se naak se baal iske saaf kiye chehra iska maine samne laya muh ka aur khoon uluda tha mere kapde bhi bhare gaye जिसम भी भरा गया तो मैंने इसको दफने जनाजा किया तो दफना दिया दो हजार दो से तब से फिर दिन को भी आते थे चार बजे भी आते थे रात के ग्यारह बजे भी आते कोई दिन में हमको टाइम नहीं मिलता था वहाँ डेड बॉडी पड़ी रहती थी एक को दफन करते पीछे से और चार आ जाती थी इतना भी हुआ बेदर्दी से मारा है बेदर्दी बहुत बेदर्दी से मारा है हम बोलते भाई कौन आदमी है ये ऊपर बात है अत मोहम्मद स्टेट दट दॉडी each in graphic and gruesome detail bas wo hi scene aa jata hai hamare samne khoon hai kafan pehna hai khoon chal raha hai khoon bah raha hai kaan se bah raha hai chhati se bah raha hai tang se bah raha hai khoon chal raha hai inki na shakal inki jawani inka chehra dekhkar humko neend bhi nahi aati thi very tragic indeed let me move on to torture in custody indian occupation forces have for long used torture as a tool of coercion since 2014 around 30000 people have been subjected to worst kind of torture investigations revealed that indian occupation forces have established 239 torture cells most of which are located in north kashmir with 64 in baramula and 53 in kashmir in srinagar testimonies of 432 victims have revealed that 231 of them were electrocuted 70 were burnt and 169 were rolled over by heavy wooden or iron logs while bodies of 12 victims were slit this is confirmed by this video of nazir ahmed sheikh whose legs were cut by 14 dogra regiment army is a chhota regiment dogra मेजर मुल्तानी तो पे तुलास बुन वह आर्मी सेंटर तथे कर् टारचर तो इस कलम सेल सेंटर वो अस रूल तुलान तो कर रूल मे पे उंज चोर तटि जंग दोन वन जो पे कट अगर ये सत्य यू जुलम आ कर पे कर् ये गवर्मेंट कह तंसाफ या कह तीज या कह हिसाब मेस अयाल सट मी मूव नाव टू एन अदर सीरियस इशू विच इज सस्पेक्टेड यूज ऑफ कैमिकल वेपन्स in sheer dis- desperation from 2017 onwards the occupation forces have possibly resorted to use of chemical weapons 37 kashmiris have been burnt alive while their bodies were completely beyond recognition on 26 june 2020 indian occupation forces carried out a cordon and search operation in tral area of district pulwama in which they destroyed 18 houses 
and burnt three youth apparently by using chemical weapons which deshaped their bodies. Now we are going to show you a video but let me forewarn you since it has graphic content. That is most traumatic. As you know, use of chemical weapons is in complete contravention of Chemical Weapons Convention and it necessitates international investigation. Let me now move to violence against women and children. The Indian Occupation Forces have raped or molested more than 3,850 women and killed over 650 besides victimizing numerous minors since 2014. On 14th October 2019, it was admitted by the Administration of Occupied Kashmir in the Indian Supreme Court that 144 children had been detained in August and September alone of 2019. The youngest one was just nine years old. As evidence, please listen to one of the audio conversations of September 2020, wherein Indian officers can be heard discussing the arrest and torture of two girls, all in knowledge of the brigade commander. Listen to this. Hello. Jahan? Yes, I'm talking about it. Now there is some I mean, important interrogation going on. We are cross-questioning both of them. Okay? Both the girls. No, 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 no. Both the girls only. We are grilling both of them as of now. And father, we yet to come inside. Father has been kept separate. Hey, look, ja, yar, kyu, kyu pura detail abhi reveal karwa raha hai. Ab mat kar, yar, thoda dicey hai, yar, mat kar. There are lot of things which are related, na, yar. People are monitoring it from outside also. Hai na? Commander ko maine brief kiya hua hai. Ha, commander ko maine brief kiya hua hai. Recommended that abhi isko thoda sa low key pe rakh, because thoda. No, don't, don't, don't tell anybody. I know, so it is better we keep it as low. I have already briefed the commander. So, to commander, ke le, request hai, abhi thoda sa ja. in, a, in another instance, a 16 year old girl who was raped by the occupation forces narrates the horrific details of the incident. Please watch this video. One young girl did decide to speak out. She was picked up from school, still wearing her uniform, and accused of aiding militants. It was a big aid, and it was a big aid, and it was a big aid. At that time, they didn't know which button was going on, and it was going on my head, and it was going on my head, so I was so scared. My eyes were going on the other side, and my eyes were going on the other side. My eyes were going on the other side. There were two people. तो एक तो मैं अकेली लड़की थी इतनी छोटी तो मैं कुछ कर नहीं पाई उस टाइम ऐसे ही कपड़ फाड़े मेरे यूनिफॉर्म को फाड़े ऐसे मेरा शलवार भी और मेरा फिराक भी बिल्कुल मुझे ओपन कर दिया उसने मैं सोच रही थी शायद मेरे एजट लूटने लगे ये तो फिर बाद में मुझे मार डालेंगे वो तो बाद में वैसा ही हुआ मेरे कपड़े फाड़ कर और मेरी जिंदगी खराब कर दी उन्होंने मैं चिल्लाती थी कोई नहीं सुनता था बहुत सारे की जिंदगी तबाह होगी अनदर सीरियस कंसर्न इज एनफोर्स डिसअपियरेंसेस एंड रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन ऑफ हाफ विडोस अकॉर्डिंग टू द गार्डियन द नंबर ऑफ एनफोर्स डिसअपियरेंसेस रेंजेस फ्रॉम 8000 टू 10000 व्हाइल मोर देन 2500 वुमेन हुज हस्बैंड्स आर एनफोर्स डिसअपियर्ड कंसीडर्ड एज हाफ विडोस are living in a state of distress. You can witness this video clip where a young girl reveals enforced disappearance of her father on 21st of August 2015. 
21 अगस्त 2050 में पापा अरेस्ट हो गए मम्मा की डेथ हो गई 5 नवंबर 2012 में फिर कुछ महीने ही पापा यहां थे घर में फिर अरेस्ट हुए फिर इन्हें छोड़ा जाता था फिर अरेस्ट होते हैं लेकिन 2015 से वो कभी ना रहा हो चुके सिर्फ एक पीएस खत्म होता है तो दूसरा पीएस लगाते हैं ये सारे बहुत सारी मुश्किलें आते हैं मैं टेलीविजन काम करती हूं थोड़ा सा कमाती हूं इसमें से तो अपने बहन भाइयों को स्कूल पढ़ाती हूं और अनदर डायमेंशन ऑफ द इलीगल ऑक्यूपेशन इज द यूज ऑफ पैलेट गन्स सिंस 2014 Indian occupation forces have killed 120 blinded 1253 including minors and seriously injured over 15000 kashmiris by using pellet guns these brutal acts were amply substantiated by a comprehensive report of the amnesty international covering testimonies of 88 pellet victims this heartbreaking video shows the suffering of a 2 year old heba nisar resident of shopian who was hit by pellets and unfortunately this little girl also lost her eyesight forever <laughs> मरतान खूस लाशन our tool of subjecting kashmiris to collective punishment since 2014 around 15500 such operations have been carried out during which occupying forces have destroyed around 6500 properties of kashmiris these properties are burned with the consent of the central government to break the will of the kashmiris in an audio conversation from 16th of february 2019 Indian army officials can be heard talking about orders by PM Modi giving a free hand to the forces and this led to burning of 35 villages in Srinagar Please listen to this audio Okay aaj Modi ji bol diya khuli sawar satta jawano ko jab se jab thok do ek ek khun ke katre ka hisab liya jayega 80 gaadi jala diya aaj jammu mein gaadi shivlin ki to janta ko bata diya na 35 gaon mein hai Srinagar mein पैतीस गांव खत्म करने के लिए बता रहे पैतीस गांव खत्म कर दो बोलो खत्म कर दो भाई बोलो दैट शोज द इम्प्यूनिटी विद विच दे आर ऑपरेटिंग ऑक्यूपाइंग फोर्सेज ऑल्सो यूज कश्मीरी वेमेन एंड चिल्ड्रेन एज ह्यूमन शील्ड्स ड्यूरिंग एनकाउंटर्स मेकिंग दैन स्लीप एट मिलिट्री कैंप्स फोर्सिंग दैम टू डिग माइन फील्ड एंड टाइंग यूथ विद मिलिट्री जीप्स वन सच एग्जाम्पल I am sure you remember was of Farooq Ahmed Dar resident of Badgam who was tied to an army vehicle by Major Nitin Gagoi of 53 Rashtriya rifles instead of punishment this officer was conferred with commendation medal on 22nd of May 2017 <laughs> खतरनाक 
فرای تا سنا اس کا قصور تا شن کی یا سے خدا اس خبر بھی اس میں نشان میں خبر صبح وہ سس جیم چا اصل پوشن درا سس اور بجی وہ تا ایتین اس نہ اٹھ لگا میں اٹھ لگا میں پورا کی انٹیگریشن تائم پر گون روز جی پٹا روڈ اس پٹا کہ گھر والی سی نہ روڈ اس پٹ میں روڈ اس پٹ یوز ظلم کیش کرنا تو اس اپ ہو یہ پر پتہ گام شا لگ بھگ پھر وہ 8 کلو میٹر ہوں اٹھو کلو چھو بوس یو بنو میں فٹ بال بٹ فٹ بال چھ گنا گراؤنڈس میں کرکٹ تے پٹ گنو میں سفر کی نال با بوس انسان کے بوس کھلونا یہ موگ مور تھو تے کہ ایک موس کی اس مطلب ایسا رے پتا ہی تے موس یا پر مشتیز کا مو یا کی تو تو وہ تے یا پر تے ہو پر تے پکنا next let me uh, focus on the draconian laws which have been used by the indian occupation to perpetuate its illegal occupation in iiojk six draconian laws empower indian occupation forces to declare anyone as a terrorist and arbitrarily detain without any charge for a period up to 7 years the office of the high commissioner for human rights report of 2018 states that special laws have created structures that obstruct the normal course of law impede accountability and jeopardize the right to remedy for victims of human rights violations military siege mr modi's fascist regime continues to obliterate indigenous kashmiri identity based on differences in religion ethnicity culture and political views post 5th august 2019 indian apartheid has translated into almost 10000 cordon and search operations and more than 14000 arrests a fact finding team reported that over 13000 children have been detained since 5th of august 2019 please watch this video clip <laughs> by an estimate since this clamp down 13000 bachche jo hai wo gayab ho gaye the so forces feel very angry when they see a young kashmiri boy it has to be a stone pelter or some sort of an anti social undesirable detail parents ko ja ke jail ke bahar list mein dekhna padta hai tab unhe pata lagta hai ki kya halat है उनके बच्चे कौन सी जेल में हमें वो माए भी मिली जिनके बच्चों को छोड़ने के लिए उनसे पैसे की मांग की गई मैक्सिमम आठ बजे तक घर की लाइटें बंद हुई थी कि एक छोटी बच्ची जो पढ़ाई कर रही थी रात के आठ बजे से ज्यादा टाइम हो गया था उसके घर पहुंचे और उसके साथ पसंद की कि उसकी मां ने उसको बचाया अगले दिन उसके बाप और भाई को पकड़ के लिया कि किस तरीके से जब वो लड़कियां जिन्होंने नकाब डाला हुआ होता है वो ड्यूटी के लिए आ रही होती है तो रास्ते में आदमी उनका नकाब छीनती है उनके साथ बदसलूकी होती है so what uh, uh, i can say is that an indian variant of uh, uh, genocide is happening in kashmir aur sabhi sirf ek hi baat kehte hain hame Indeed, that's an Indian variant of genocide. Uh, another serious concern is about use of snipers and cluster ammunition. Ceasefire violations since 2014 had resulted in 198 deaths and 1,049 injuries. Indian military also used snipers and cluster munitions to target innocent Kashmiris living along the line of control. 16 innocent Kashmiris. have been killed by indian snipers and accounts of 10 victims have been included in this dossier one of them is 9 years old ayan zahid resident of kotli who was killed by indian sniper on 18th february 2019 while he was playing outside his house in july 2019 india deliberately targeted targeted 14 villages along the line of control with cluster ammunition resulting in four deaths and 14 injuries which was confirmed by forensic reports 
In June 2020, British MP Steve Baker urged UK government to investigate use of cluster ammunition by inspecting the sites and the evidence pro provided by Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, now I shall talk about the Kashmir Freedom Movement and Indian false flag operations. Kashmir Freedom Movement <coughs> has a peaceful and indigenous character, but Indian atrocities over the years have forced the educated youth to pick up arms as an instrument of last resort. The data on slide reflects that 72 martyred since 2016, including 10 who were MPhils and PhDs, 15 master's degree holders, and 47 graduates. Post 5th August 2019, Mr. Yashwan Sena, ex-Foreign Minister of India, led three visits to occupied Kashmir from the platform of Concerned Citizen Group and released nine reports. The group last visited IIOJK from 5th to 7th of July 2021 and noted the youth was being pushed towards militancy because of the harassment faced by people at the hands of the army personnel. The International Crisis Group report titled Raising Stakes in Kashmir released in August 2020 has endorsed Kashmir Freedom Movement as an indigenized movement. The report highlights that Indian militarized response to peaceful resistance has completely alienated the youth and gradually pushed them towards an armed insurgency which is exponentially rising and is homegrown with local support. Another serious concern of the international community is about Indian patronage of ISIS. The evidence reflects that India is running five ISIS training camps, out of which one is located at Gulmarg in IIOJK, three are located in Rajasthan, and one in Uttarakhand. The coordinates of these ISIS camps are flashed on the screen. By injecting these state-trained ISIS fighters, India may try to establish linkages of the freedom movement with international terrorism. In order to malign the freedom struggle, on the one hand, and to justify its own crimes as counter-terrorist operations. Let me now move to fake encounters. The dossier includes details of 80 major fake encounters in which more than 160 innocent persons have been martyred. 13 fake encounters were carried out by Special Operations Group, 15 by CRPF, 8 by police, 16 by Rashtriya Rifles, and 28 by other units. Now I shall uncover the reality of Indian state-directed fake encounters. In an audio conversation of October 2019, two Indian officials can be heard discussing about a certain Molana who had agreed to provide freedom fighters for fake encounter. Please listen sir. to this clip. Sir, uh, morning, sir. Uh, sir, I am fine, sir, I am fine. One second, Maulana Hussain came to me, sir. This Maulana Hussain, sir, who had been paid for 5,30,000 rupees. So, sir, we have made a video, sir, and he signed it on the paper. He made it on the game, sir. He made it on the game, sir. He said, I'll give you a million dollars, sir. I'll give you a million dollars, sir. I'll give you a million dollars, sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But sir, आप यदि इसको सर मतलब थोड़ा इसको twist करेंगे ना सर तो he will he got a capability to give us an good operation sir I am telling you sir. Now in another conversation of May 2019, a commanding officer can be heard asking to show recovery during cordon and search operations and fake encounter of a boy held in custody. Please listen to this. Yes, sir. Conference call up. You have conference call up. Yes, sir. Whenever you find something, try to show something in the casos, in these casos. Like I'll give you the echo, जो उसके था incriminating evidence जो मिला था. या तो था कि लड़के के पास कुछ मिला था. हाँ, उसके पास सर चार round है. अभी हम लोगों ने बचा के रखा हुआ है उसको. कभी भी पकड़ लेंगे. Okay, point kills, point kills. So next operation clip show this लड़का. You don't have to show tender. वो सर वो वहाँ से निकल रहा था तो हमारे उसमें फंस गया. So all the this is for all. All the cash flows should produce something. Now another example. In a joint operation on 30th December 2020, Indian Occupation Forces and Police killed three youth 
in Srinagar and labeled them as terrorists. The slain individuals were in fact identified as locals. General H. Sahi, Commander Kilo Force and IGP, IGP Vijay Kumar had made false claims and declared them as terrorists. Similarly, on 18th July 2020, three Kashmiri youth were killed during a fake encounter at Shopian and declared as Pakistanis. In December 2020, Indian Occupation Forces admitted that Captain Bhubendra of 62 Rashtriya Rifles and two civilians had deliberately killed innocent Kashmiris and planted fake weapons on them with a, with a motive to grab a reward money of 2 million Indian rupees. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the evidence of fake recovery of arms and ammunition being presented today reflect such false flag operations are utilized by army units to seek glory and incentives. Purchased weapons are usually depicted as recovered from hideouts of freedom fighters. Now, in this conversation of June 2019, commanding officer of a unit can be heard asking for update on purchase of AK-47, for which an amount of Indian rupees 50,000 had already been provided. Listen to this clip, please. And what happened to AK? Sir, AK's clip that we talked about, sir, that's why we have to do it again. You are one year old, no? You are one year old, no? In front of us. Where is the AK? Sir, AK is now with the hat-o-si. We have to take it out. We have to take it out. We have to give them money. You have to ask for 50,000. ना मांगे थे ना इसी पार्टी में बैठ के पचास हजार पड़े हैं तुम्हारे पास में ऊपर तीन महीने पहले तुमने मुझे बोला था कि सर पैसे मिलने चाहिए आई गेव यू फिफ्टी ग्रैंड व्हाट इज एप्पन टू इट यस सर यस सर सर अभी ट्रस्ट वर्दी अभी ऐसे ही दे देंगे ना 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 सिमिलरली इन अनदर कॉन्वर्सेशन ऑफ and placement of purchased weapons to show fake recovery of arms. Please listen. Jain sir, sir, Alpha Company Commander, there are two issues. Hi, sir. Jain sir. Baki, Avinash sir, which is the name of the Hindi language. He is the name of the Hindi language. He is the name of the Hindi language. Now, sir, what is it, sir? Look, you know, sir. You said that you didn't have any input. 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 अरे वो हाइडाउट निकाल रहा है और उसके लिए पैसा ले रहा है। तुम लोग क्यों निकाल सकते हो मैं इसे? सर मैं आपको फ्री में हाइडाउट दे दूँगा सर मैंने भी हाइडाउट निकाले हैं सर। पहले भी सर वो गंदे से वो जलीटिन ट्यूब डाले थे सर उसमें निकाल के हाइडाउट में पैसा लेके वेपन डालना है <laughs> now let me talk about the Nagrota fake encounter. The evidences presented abundantly illustrate that Indian false flag operations are based on fabrications. Nagrota fake encounter of 2020 is one such example of BJP RSS theatrics. Some of the inconsistencies observed also validate that it, this was a false flag operation. For example, the identities of individuals were not revealed, indicating their earlier custody from among the long list of hundreds of disappeared Kashmiris. Secondly, rusted AK-47s ammunition and communication sets were shown as recovered. Now, how is it possible that combatants were carrying rusted weapons in high security area? And it was portrayed that so-called miscreants infiltrated from a tunnel at Samba, which has been mentioned several times since 2012, twice in 2016, and again in August and November 2020. The claim of existence of tunnel in Samba district just a few meters away from the working boundary and its repeated usage for infiltration under such complex security grid is highly exaggerated. With this, I would like to conclude and would like to hand over the floor back to the Foreign Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us uh, Minister for Human Rights. Uh, over to you, Shireen. Thank you, Minister. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 
I won't add to the data which is already in the dossier um, except I do want to make a reference where rape was mentioned, rape cases I want to give a particular reference Jo Kunan or Pushpura may mass rape Swinti and the case has been before the Indian courts and nothing has happened on it. And that is where rape was used as a weapon of war for the first time by the Indian security forces in the early 1990s. Um, and that case is still to be resolved. So I just want to add to it, I want to address the international community. First the UN. UN ki Security Council ki resolution hai on uh, protecting women and children during armed conflicts. And if states do not do that, or if states indulge in violence against women, the UN is entitled to sanctions. So, the question is why is the UN not implementing those sanctions, which it's, it is itself uh, in, uh, introduced? through its UN Security Council resolution of women in armed conflict. Pehli baat wo. Dusra, I wanted to add, why is the UN and the international community not pushing for the India to allow special procedures, mandate holders of the UN uh, Human Rights Council to uh, give, be given free access into occupied Jammu and Kashmir? Ye, Occupation or annexation ke kawaneen hai, conventions international including the Geneva Convention and there are specific rules of what an occupation power can do or kya wo nahi kar sakta or India has violated all those and I want to call on the UK also just special sanctions laws banaye after they left uh, the EU uh, and why are, is the UK because of business interests not bothering to assert itself on the human rights issue. Because we say that the human rights is a central focus of Western countries' foreign policies. But if you do not apply your own principles of foreign policy uh, fairly across the board and you cherry pick that Pakistan is a Muslim country, you can do it on the human rights. In Hindustan, we have a lot of business. Hai, so, this is the first thing that we have to do. This means that there is no respect for human rights by these Western states. And I want to make a special point. 2015, European Union Directed General for External Policies provided a, a, a policy paper on how European country, EU member states, should uh, make policies in connection with occupation and annexation. Or usme clearly as amongst the principles ek tha, that every EU member state has to give a clear cut statement that annexation will not be recognized. Where is that statement against India after 5th August uh, annexation attempts by India? Where is it? I want to question the EU which is raising all sorts of human rights issues about other countries of the world. Where is your statement against annexation, which you yourself have made as a policy doctrine? Then again, EU ne sanctions lagai against what they said was illegal annexation of Crimea by Russia. Abhi tak unho ne wo sanctions ko renew ki hai, 2022 tak. Where are the sanctions against India for illegal annexation? These are questions that we need to ask. Why is there a duplicity of standards? Why is India allowed its fascist policies, the Hindutva policy, where it is targeting Kashmiris? And by the way, the change in demography is a war crime in an occupied territory, according to the Fourth Geneva Convention. Why has anybody taken notice? Where is the UN? Where is the European Union with its high-minded human rights uh, uh, pontification that they do towards the rest of the world? So, dekhe, is tarah nahi ho sakta ke you cherry pick EU ke iske khilaaf to sanctions laga do kyunke inho ne violate kiya hamari foreign policy doctrine lekin Hindustan ko karne do jo karta hai. Aur ab dekhe, 
the UN Security Council is headed, has been given the presidency to India at a time when the Indian government is a Hindutva fascist regime similar to Nazis in Germany. So imagine, would the UN have allowed a Nazi regime to chair the UN Security Council presidency? Would they have allowed it to have the presidency? This hypocrisy has to be exposed because we are going to get more lectures on human rights um, in our region from uh, our Western democratic countries. So we need to be prepared and not be defensive and say, show us your intent by implementing jo aapne khud apne liye rules or policies banayi hai, implement them against India and its occupation in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Because unless they do that, there is no credibility to their claims of human rights. And meanwhile, I also want to add, pellet guns are used for hunting animals. They are an inhumane weapon. Jo bachon ke khilaf aap use kar rahe ho, aur khawateen ke khilaf in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Cluster bombs are banned. India and Pakistan dono ne sign ki vi hai what is known popularly as the Inhumane Weapons Convention. India is using cluster bombs. Ye wohi India hai jis ne chemical weapon convention sign ki thi aur usse pehle Pakistan ke saath aapko yaad hoga under the Benazir regime they signed a bilateral chemical weapons convention and said we have destroyed all our chemical weapons so jab chemical weapon international convention pata chali and everybody had to declare their stockpiles pata chala india has huge stockpiles of chemical weapons har dafa hindustan jhoot bolta hai international community ko aur international community does not get called out on its lack of response to india's illegal and rogue behavior now, cluster bombs are banned under the Inhumane Convention. Why nobody has a voice against the use of cluster bombs? And pellet guns, which are used for animals and are being used on children. Where is the human rights? Where are the voices of human rights? Why are they silent? This is the question as a Pakistani and as part of the government of Pakistan, I want to pose to the European Union, to the UN, to the US, and to the United Kingdom, who keep pontificating on human rights and how human rights are being violated in so many countries. The biggest human rights violator, the rogue state of India today, under the fascist Modi regime, is being allowed to do as it pleases. Why? And I think our media should keep asking that question, why? Why? To the West because they keep talking to us about human rights. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I will uh, conclude by saying that um, protecting fundamental human rights is not just a responsibility of the state. There are international ob uh, obligations. There are international instruments there are international mechanisms to ensure that they are protected and uh, I think they should be fulfilled and I reiterate what uh, Dr. Shireen has said that the UN must compel India to allow access to special procedure mandate holders of the UN Human Rights Council for independent investigation of human rights violations that are uh, taking place in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Another point I would like to raise is that the UN Department of Peacekeeping Operations, they must make a, a, a note the names of individuals and units in the Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir who have been directly responsible for human rights violations. They should be identified, named, not just shamed, disallowed to be part of UN peacekeeping operations. So, I will uh, uh, conclude by making a few demands. One, India to stop human rights violations of Kashmiris. Two, proceed against the perpetrators uh, 
who have uh, uh, you know who have been highlighted in this dossier three put an end to demographic change four lift military and digital siege five release all political prisoners and six allow unhindered access to the un to the independent permanent human rights commission of the oic to independent journalists um, human rights organizations and civil society organizations in the indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir thank you thank you i understand the <laughs> ministers and the nsa are available to take a couple of questions uh can we have a question from the end please mr garapa thank you very much sir and indeed it's a uh, awakening for all of us that how this perpetration of human rights violation is going on but uh, since 2014 rss has successfully implemented its anti muslim anti minority agenda in the mainland india as well as the occupied valley now nazi inspired extremist hindutva ideology inhibited with uh, revenge and hate torture and terror uh, is not a threat for the world community at large we are talking of minority and the muslims only uh, what do you think why the world is silent and the world is not making a big mistake a blunder to face in the coming decades thank you the key uh, um, i think the world is uh one has learned through history that the policy of appeasement does not work and you see how everybody paid a huge price because the policy of appeasement was being pursued in the 30s when fascism was on the rise this is the time this is the time that uh, we want to jolt the uh, conscience of the world wake them up and tell them act now before it's too late uh, you know these policies are not just destabilizing the region they will have far reaching implications policy of appeasement will not work yes uh, you have uh, interests but then you also pontificate you know you believe in higher values so if you believe in those higher values then demonstrate and act and act now would like to add I'll just say uh, one thing uh, we will actually take your audience again very soon to talk about this specific issue of the 1930s and what is happening now because it is identical we've gone into details of looking at this and let's be very honest dekhiye kuch arsa pehle tak aap sawal puchte the to privately bhi western duniya aapse baat karke kehti thi ji nahi aisa nahi hai aap galat keh rahe hain there is nobody today who behind closed doors defends what india is doing i think we should be clear about this because what is happening is so egregious that there is no possibility that anybody with a straight face can tell you that what pakistan is saying is not correct but they also then tell you yes we have economic interest there are other reasons this and that that is the barrier that the world will have to break not for pakistan's sake but for its own sake this is exactly how europe talked about hitler and then we saw what happened so the point is we are clear where this is going the region is going to be affected first but the entire world will be affected and we will show you data to prove that this is identical but i i want to put it on record that there is nobody who can now talk about india with a straight face saying that what we are saying is not correct everybody acknowledges it this is a change of course when you see planes flying over the uk and uh, indian media talking about it as afghanistan heads hang in shame that's all somebody can do thank you can we have a question from uh, the gentleman here in the <coughs> second row uh, adil abasi from airway uh, nsa mohit yusuf sir uh, this question is to you that uh, though it is not directly related to uh, this subject uh, today's subject indian role in afghanistan is fully exposed in uh, um, Uh, twen- uh, for 20 years now it has been uh, we have seen that they have abetting terrorism inside afghanistan but also uh, pakistan 
we know that and we have discussed this number of times here in Pakistan and outside Pakistan but world not taking it seriously. Why? I just want to know this fact because it's been almost 20 years we are raising this issue. Afghanistan and Kashmir. Uh, world silence uh, we have seen. Uh, now it has commenced uh, disinfo campaign to misguide the world about Pakistan's role in India. It has lied to the world about real situation in uh, Indian occupied Kashmir by sending MEPs from EU and several other tactics. Why there is no condemnation of such brutal state hypocrisy yet? देखिए मैं आपसे थोड़ा सा डिसएग्री करूंगा ये चीजें ओवरनाइट नहीं होती हैं हमें पता है कि इंडिया के क्या दुनिया के साथ इंटरेस्ट हैं ये काउंटरवेट टू चाइना इज अनदर बोगी जस्ट लुक एट व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इनसाइड इंडिया लुक एट द पावर दैट चाइना वील्ड्स इट्स लाफेबल टू थिंक दैट दिस कंट्री कैन बी अ काउंटरवेट एक्सेप्ट अन टू इटसेल्फ बट इट इज व्हाट इट इज व्हाट आई हैव जस्ट सेड एंड आई विल रिपीट अगेन देयर इज क्लियर शिफ्ट in what the world thinks about india i am not taking any credit for ourselves india is doing what it's doing uh, inside india and the world is seeing that this eu disinfo lab report that you mentioned catalogs 15 years of a fake news network against pakistan in 114 countries why didn't they reveal it before when pakistan started talking about these issues publicly and this is a change That we have made. देखिए मैं जब से ये बात कर रहा हूं फॉरन मिनिस्टर कर रहे हैं हम सब कर रहे हैं एंड दिस इज अ चेंज फ्रॉम प्रीवियस गवर्नमेंट दिस नॉट अ पोलिटिकल स्टेटमेंट वी हैव नथिंग टू हाइट कोई रीजन नहीं है जिसकी वजह से मैं दुनिया के सामने बैठ के ये ना बताऊं कि मेरा दुश्मन मेरे खिलाफ और पूरी रीजन के खिलाफ क्या कर रहे जो भी रीजन था पहले यह बात पाकिस्तान नहीं करता था अब हम दो टोक अल्फाज में यह बात कर रहे हैं एंड द वर्ल्ड इज रिस्पॉन्डिंग येस दे आर नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग द वे दे शुड गिवन वॉट इज हैपनिंग इन इंडिया यही चीज अगर कहीं और हो रही होती तो अभी यहां पर दुनिया कहां से कहां पहुंच गई होती बट आई एम टेलिंग यू दे कैन नॉट विद स्ट्रेट फेस रिस्पॉन्ड टू वॉट वी टेल दैम रिमेंबर वी पुट आउट अ डोसी एन अक्टोबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी पब्लिकली ऑब्वियसली नो बडी सेड एनी थिंग but there is not a single comment that has come back to us saying that we challenge a fact in what pakistan has presented so this is changing inshallah you will see this change as it is they are exposed agar aap aajkal india and media dekhe to lagta hai delhi has fallen um, you know and so at the end of the day these things do matter there it's not going to be overnight but pakistan will continue presenting evidence that will show what the real india is and how it's a threat to the world Can we have a question from uh, the right side at the back, and the lady at the back? Thank you very much. Uh, my question is on all three of you. Uh, you spoke about UN as well, and you spoke about the atrocities as well. And women rights are very much there. The violation is very much there with evidence, stern evidence. Uh, Foreign Minister, uh, Pakistan has local standee on Kashmir as well. we have numerous resolutions passed by un on kashmir kashmiris uh, self uh, uh, right to self determination that what is keeping uh, un away from uh, obliging all these uh, 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 resolutions on kashmir and uh, do we get anything from un as response that what is keeping them away from all those implementations and why they can't do anything to liberate kashmir iiojk if, if we speak about that in particular like east timor and south sudan we have precedences already so what i i would like to know that behind closed doors what is the response from un in that regard thank you very much dekhi uh, let us uh, look at things realistically this issue is not new it's been there for over seven decades but there's a new focus that our government has put on this issue it was put on the back burner for years but now we have highlighted it at every forum uh since the 5th of august 2019 the issue of jammu and kashmir the dispute of jammu and kashmir has been taken up and discussed at uh the security council indian claim was that this is an internal matter of india 
and why is it being discussed there but that was negated that was rejected uh, the Secretary General of the UN was here in Islamabad and uh, perhaps you were present in the press conference the position he took he reiterated the UN position uh, the President of the General Assembly was here in Islamabad and he clearly uh, uh, spelt out what the clear position is now we are pursuing uh, what we think is the right thing to do I think uh, we have a strong legal case. Uh, uh, Kashmiris were promised uh, a plebiscite, uh, and uh, that is not being the right to self-determination is being denied. We will continue to do what we ought to do. Fortunately, uh, there is uh, well, we could have achieved more. More could have been done, but let's not forget that number of things have happened that did not happen in the past. For example, the two reports produced by the Human Rights Commissioner uh, in June 2018 and July 2019, now these are very, very authentic and very credible reports. The fact that the uh, Human Rights Council, you know, in December 2020, has sent six communications uh, to India, you know, uh, uh, you know, through their special reporters to be given access. You know, they've been denied. But it is changing. It is changing. The fact that two resolutions have been moved in the U.S. Congress, you know, uh, for lifting of uh, sanctions, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, sanctions that have been imposed by the Indian occupation forces. The fact that, uh, you know, 85 uh, congressmen have, you know, in the last, uh, you know, a couple of years raised this issue. The House of Commons has debated it. Uh, it is building up. Obviously, at times, uh, international players uh, prefer political expediency uh, and overlook things, but we will continue to do what we think is right. Uh, one day, I am confident, one day the, uh, the, the oppressors will be held accountable. I just wanted okay. to add yeah. the one second. Also, I think that Pakistan is now also studying other options beyond the traditional diplomacy of the UN and the Human Rights Council because there are a number of options now available to us with uh, the European Union, as I pointed out, with their foreign policy paper. So that is something we need to take up more aggressively and I'm sure we will be doing. There are options also of seeking a UN uh, General Assembly resolution for an advisory opinion from the ICJ on the demographic and uh, changes and annexation because the ICJ already has set a precedence because it gave an advisory opinion which the General Assembly requested on the illegal wall that uh, Israel built and they said that any change in an occupied territory is a war crime. So that precedent has been set in the advisory opinion by the ICJ. So if we can get a resolution in the UN General Assembly, the ICJ can't suddenly do a double take and go back on that. So that would have a lot of impact. So there are a lot of other options now that Pakistan has because the world, as Mohit pointed out, no one in the world now says that what India is doing is right, what India claims is right. No, they know it's wrong. And yes, every country has its vital national interests, but at the end of the day, if they keep making human rights especially essential to their policies, then it increases the chances of pushing for India to be sanctioned and for the pressure therefore on the UN also, including its five permanent members because we have this veto that hangs there. Uh, but what I think that other than what states can do, in our media, the international media, human rights organizations should call into question why India is being given legitimacy at the UN Security Council. I mean, these are the questions that the non-state actors, the media, 
should be raising also. Don't just leave it to the governments to do things. Thank you. Can we have a question from the gentleman at the back in the middle row? Yes. Assalamu alaikum, Foreign Minister, Ministers, NSA. Farooq Patafi here. Yeah. I wanted to be clear. All right. Uh, I wanted to actually ask about bare minimum. While you were giving this very pithy presentation, I was just looking at it uh, and the numbers that stood up, especially about enforced disappearances, uh, was humongous. Eight to ten thousand people uh, have been uh, are di uh, have disappeared, and uh, nobody knows their status, and their wives are now uh, called half widows. Uh, in that state of affairs, and this is perhaps only documented number, there might be more people who are missing and the, uh, uh, everything has accelerated because of uh, Narendra Modi. Uh, the question about bare minimum is, where can the Kashmiris go? Which uh, international humanitarian organization or body can they approach just to uh, compel India to reveal the status of these men who have been taken in. Because we don't know whether they are alive, whether they are dead, at least their family should have some kind of closure. So this is my question. Thank you very much. Any international organization can question the Indian government itself because they are the ones doing the disappearances, picking up people like that. And I think if governments uh, and parliaments of different countries put the question to the Indians and they need to demand an answer because at the end of the day, the Indian state would have all the figures. They know who has disappeared. So countries and human rights organizations need to target the Indian government to get the data from them because nobody else will have access to the data because those responsible for the actions will have the data also. Uh, Pratavi sahab, uh, I'll just add to that. I understand that the Human Rights Council ka forum is a big bawakar forum and it can be engaged with it. It can go there, it can go there, it can go there, it can go there. And we need to see that there are other mechanisms, mechanisms, international mechanisms available that can be brought to us. Maybe you remember that in the EU Disinfo Lab, one of the first things was that Hindustan had registered NGOs that were registered NGOs, so there is a whole process where the accredited NGOs are also going to go to the forums in the forums, and they are also going to go to the forums in the forums, and they are also going to go to the forums. वो भी यही चीज उठाती है उनके थ्रू भी हो सकता है अनफॉर्चुनेटली वॉट द इंडियंस हे डन वॉज पुट कैनिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड बिस्किट मेकिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज ए क्रेडिटेड एनजीओ दैट्स वॉट फैशिज गवर्नमेंट डू आई थिंक एज द फॉरन मिनिस्टर सेट स्पेसिफिकली विद रिगार्ड टू द्यूमन राइट काउंसिल देर इज ए वर्किंग ग्रुप ऑन इन वॉलंट्री एंड एनफोर्स डिस अपियरेंसिस विच कैन स्पेसिफिकली बी आस्ट टू इन्वेस्टिगेट Uh, can we have a question from the first row, uh, Madam? Thank you so much. Uh, I have actually two questions. I am trying to club them uh, in one. My first question is for uh, Ms. Uh, Foreign Minister and then uh, uh, for National Security Advisor. Uh, for National Security Advisor, I will uh, put up my question first. Uh, since India is signatory of so many um, conventions for not using uh, uh, web, uh, use of chemical uh, weapon and then uh, cluster bombs and pallet gun because uh, World Health Organization has categorically declared it's illegal and can't be used it in any war or conflict or chaotic situation. But India used it up, uh, not only for men but on uh, two years old toddler, he by nine years old, Ayan, like um, no parents can sleep after uh, this fair. Uh, so what 
uh, actually stopping the world to talk about uh, the use of chemical weapon and the uh, cluster bombs on children and uh, human beings. And my uh, second question is for Minister. Um, sir, first Ban Ki-moon, then uh, Antonio Guterres, but no one is actually uh, talking about the violation of Kashmiri um, genocide. Uh, I don't know what's stopping them to uh, take this case up to the world and, and uh, world hum humanitarian organizations uh, uh, even not talking about the violation and uh, clear and uh, loud genocide of innocent Kashmiri since uh, Debbie Abraham, UK parliamentarian, she led a delegation uh, to Delhi. Uh, she wanted to have the access of Indian occupied Kashmir, but she was denied and then she uh, approached Pakistan. The very next morning she um, uh, flew uh, here. Uh, I, I'm just uh, thinking, uh, since we cannot see such atrocities and brutalities by uh, Indian forces on Kashmiris, then what stops uh, humanitarian organizations and then you and, and then world superpowers to talk about it? Uh, do you think will they ever take action against Indian forces? Because I am more concerned about the brutalities uh, of Indian Thank forces you. especially. Thank, Thank you. 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 Thank एक्सेस नहीं दिया हमने क्या किया हमने उनको एक्सेस दिया वो यहां आए उनको मकबूल आजाद कश्मीर लेकर गए वो लोगों से मिले दिस इन इटसेल्फ वाज अ ह्यूज डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ द डिफरेंस ऑफ अप्रोच एंड एटीट्यूड टुवर्ड्स ह्यूमन बीइंग्स एंड इंडिविजुअल्स द वे दे वर बीइंग ट्रीटेड वी हैड नथिंग टू हाइड वी सेड आइए uh, उन्होंने कहा कि हम यहां uh, आना चाहते हैं पहले हमारा ख्याल था कि वो रेसिप्रोसिटी को हम सामने रखें हमने कहा ठीक है जी अगर वो नहीं देते हम देने को तैयार है आइए आके देखिए देखिए इन दिस वर्ल्ड वेयर मीडिया प्लेज रोल इन द फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ पब्लिक ओपिनियन आई थिंक this uh, institution has to be used more effectively uh, than before. And you will see that post 5th August 2019, the, the, the international media, which was generally you know, very numb and quiet about uh, the situation in Indian occupied Kashmir, has spoken up. आप देखिए बहुत से आर्टिकल्स आए हैं न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स में आया है न्यूयॉर्कर में आया है वाशिंगटन पोस्ट में आया है जिन्होंने लोगों को दहलाया है लोगों की तवज्जो मफजूल करवाई है कि दिस इज हैपनिंग अब सिर्फ प्रिंट और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया नहीं है सोशल मीडिया की जो खबर आती है और उसका जो इम्पैक्ट होता है और जिस तरह वो वायरल होती है it affects uh, uh, governments and uh, you know public opinions jab aap dekhte hain koi koi ek uh, aisa scene jo cover hota hai chahe wo official media na bhi kar raha ho ek citizen kar raha ho to wo bhi uh, attention seek kar leta hai aur usse public opinion jab badalti hai to kam as kam democracies mein ye tawakko ki jati hai ya ki jani chahiye ki it will have an impact especially public representatives हमारी अब कोशिश ये है कि हम बदकिस्मती से ये दो साल कोविड के इन्वायरमेंट रही है और आपको पता है कि कोविड के इन्वायरमेंट में ट्रेवल करना कितना मुश्किल था हमारी एक हमने स्ट्रैटेजी बनाई थी प्लान भी बनाया था कि किस तरह हम पार्लियामेंट्री डिप्लोमेसी को इस्तेमाल करें और लोगों तक रसाई हासिल करें बदकिस्मती से हम कर नहीं पाए इसलिए नहीं कर पाए बिकॉज ऑफ यू नो अभी भी रेड लिस्ट है कभी कुछ कहीं पाबंदी है कहीं पाबंदी है आपको आसानी से दस्तियाबी होती नहीं है पर इन इट विल चेंज एंड मैं समझता हूँ आपकी मदद से ये पब्लिक ओपिनियन पलटेगी हिंदुस्तान का वो जो था ना वो जो वो जो शाइनिंग इंडिया का जो इमेज था वो अब नहीं रहा सच्ची बात है वो दुनिया में नहीं वो हिंदुस्तान में नहीं रहा आज हिंदुस्तान के अंदर एक बहुत बड़ा तबका पैदा हो गया है जो कहता है कि इस सरकार ने इस बीजेपी सरकार ने जितना हमें 
اور ہمارے کشمیر کے ایشو کو جتنا انہوں نے نقصان پہنچایا ہے اور جتنا کشمیریوں کو انہوں نے ایلینیٹ کیا ہے کبھی نہ تھے وہ کشمیری جو ماضی میں ان کے لیے ایک تھوڑا سا ایک نرم گوشہ رکھتے تھے وہ حکومتوں کا حصہ بنتے تھے آج جب ان کو دلی بلایا گیا ایک بیٹھک ہوئی نا ابھی ریسنٹلی ہوئی وزیراعظم نے بلایا لیکن انہوں نے کیا کہا انہوں نے کہا جی سب کچھ ٹھیک ہے لیکن ہمارا ہمارا سٹیٹ ہوت کا کیا بنے گا ہمارے تشخص کا کیا بنے گا تو یہ ایک گیپ ہے جو آ رہا ہے اور ایک بہت بڑی اپنین ہے ویدن انڈیا جو اب جاگ رہی ہے اور کہہ رہی ہے کہ یہ جو رویہ ہے یہ درست نہیں ہے اور آپ نے جیسے ابھی اسی رپورٹ پر ذکر کیا گیا کہ جو ان کے منسٹر فکشنل فیس تھے جسون سنا نے نو رپورٹس لکھی ہیں اب یہ کوئی معمولی شخصیت نہیں ہے مطلب ہے ایک نامی گرامی شخصیت ہے ان کا ایک اپنا وزن ہے تو وہ جاتے ہیں اور رپورٹ لکھتے ہیں تو it is happening it is changing we have to pursue it اور میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ جو قربانیاں ہیں کشپیریوں کی بالخصوص اور جو یک چہتی اور یک سوئی ہے پاکستانیوں کی انشاءاللہ حالات بدلیں گے maybe we can have just one last question from gentleman at the back سر یہ ڈوزیر عالمی برادری کے ساتھ کس کس فورم پر شیئر کیا جا رہا ہے سر دیکھئے ہم نے میں نے ارس کیا نا کہ ہم نے اس کی کاپیز بھی پرنٹ کروائی ہیں ہم تو یہ کاپیز جو ہیں جتنے اپنے مشنز ہیں ہم ان کو بھی بھیجوا رہے ہیں ٹھیک اور اس میں ہم نے سیڈیز جو ہیں اور پھر ہم نے کہا نا آپ خود اس کو ویب سائٹ پہ خود اس کو اپلوڈ کر سکتے ہیں خود دے سکتے ہیں تو یہ تو جتنی ڈسیمنیشن ہے وہ ہمیں کرنی چاہیے ہر فورم پر ہم بھیجوائیں گے ہر جگہ بھیجوائیں گے ہم نے آپ نے دیکھا پچھلا جب ڈوزیر تھا ہم نے پی فائیو کے جو یہاں ایمبیسیڈرز ہیں ان کو بلا کے ان سے بھی شیئر کیا تھا اور ان کو بھی ہم نے ڈسیمنیٹ کیا تھا اقوام متحدہ کے فورم پر بھی ہم نے اس کو سرکولیٹ کیا تھا تو ہم ہر ذریعہ استعمال کریں گے تاکہ اس کی زیادہ سے زیادہ سرکولیشن ہو سکے اور اس کو لوگ دیکھ کر اپنی رائے خود قائم کریں اور جو چیزیں چھپائی جا رہی ہیں ان کو بے نقاب کریں دیکھیں بہت سے لوگ ہو سکتے ہیں وہ شاید خاموش اس لیے ہوں کہ ان تک پوری انفرمیشن کی رسائی نہیں ہے اس کے ذریعے آپ نے ان کو رسائی پہنچانے کی کوشش کی ہے اور مجھے یقین ہے کہ انشاءاللہ وہ اس کو استعمال کرتے ہوئے اس جو ان کی حق کے خود ارادیت کی تحریک ہے اس کو جلا بکشے گے تینکیو میں ایک چیز صرف اس میں ایڈ کر دوں انڈ میں کہ میری درخواست ہوگی ہم سب کی کہ یاد رکھئے کہ یہ ڈوسیر اور اس کی ٹائمنگ ٹریبیوٹ ہے گلانی صاحب کے لیے ان کی ساری زندگی اس مقصد کے لیے گزری ہے لیکن ابھی بھی یہ جد و جہد جاری ہے اور ہم نے اس کو پایا تکمیل تک پہنچانا ہے تو آپ جو بات بھی کیجئے میری درخواست ہوگی کہ گلانی صاحب کو یاد رکھئے یہ سارا ٹریبیوٹ ہے ان کے لیے جتنا کام ہو رہا ہے اور آگے بھی جو کام ہوگا اس میں بلکل اس بات کو آگے بڑھاتے ہوئے دیکھئے انہوں نے ہندوستانیوں نے جنازہ نہیں ہونے دیا لیکن پاکستان میں ہر شہر میں ان کا جنازہ آئبانہ ہوا لوگوں نے اس میں پارٹسپیٹ کیا انہوں نے اس چیز کو دبائے رکھا اور دبائے رکھے انہوں نے رکھا تو ان کی اس واقعے کو دیکھتے ہوئے ہم نے محنت سے اور کمی وقت میں یہ چیز تیار کر کے ہم دنیا کے سامنے لائے ہیں کہ تصویر کا ایک وہ رخ ہے جو وہ دنیا کو دکھانا چاہتے ہیں اور اصلی چہرہ یہ ہے جو ہم دکھانا چاہتے ہیں تینکیو وزیر خارجہ شاہ محمود خریشی وفاقی وزیر برائے انسانی حقوق شیری مزاری مشیر قومی سلامتی مورید یوسف میڈیا سے گفتگو کر رہے تھے پاکستان نے مقبوضہ کشمیر کی صورتحال سے متعلق ایک سو اکتس صفحات پر مشتمل ڈوزی ارجاری کیا ہے ان کے کہنا تھا کہ سری نگر میں مسلسل کرفیو کا نفاظ ہے مقبوضہ کشمیر میں بھارتی فورسز کے محاصرے کو سات سو انتر دن ہو چکے ہیں کشمیر میں مسلسل مواصلاتی رابطہ منقطع ہے تین ہزار چار سو بتیس وار کرائمز کیسز ہیں 
और उन्होंने ये भी कहा कि हमने नाम निहाद भारत का असल चेहरा दुनिया को दिखाया है एक वो चेहरा है जो भारत दुनिया को दिखाना चाहता है और वो एक असल चेहरा है जो इस डोजियर के सामने डोजियर के जरिए पूरी दुनिया के सामने लाने की कोशिश पाकिस्तान की जानब से की गई है इसी सिलसिले में विफाखी वजीर खारजा शाह महमूद कुरैशी विफाखी वजीर बरा इंसानी हकूक डॉक्टर शीरी मजारी मुशीर कौमी सलामती मुईद यूसुफ मीडिया से गुफ्तु कर रहे थे उन्होंने एक डोजियर भी जारी किया है जिसमें पाकिस्तान ने मकबूजा कश्मीर की सूरत हाल से मुतक एक सौ इकतीस सफात पर मुश्तम अपनी एक रिपोर्ट तैयार की है जिसमें कहा गया है कि कश्मीर में मुसलसल जुल्म सितम जारी है उसमें यह भी लिखा गया है कि इस नगर में मुसलसल कर्फ्यू का नफाज है और साथ ही साथ इस मौके पर विफाखी वजीर खारजा शाह महमूद कुरैशी का यह कहना था कि कश्मीर में मुसलसल जब्र का सिलसिला जारी है जुल्म का सिलसिला जारी है और पाकिस्तान इस सिलसिले में अपनी आवाज उठाना कभी भी नहीं रोकेगा हमेशा पाकिस्तान ने कश्मीरियों की हिमायत की है हमेशा पाकिस्तान ने कश्मीरियों का साथ दिया है और हमेशा देता रहेगा पाकिस्तान साथ उन्होंने ये कहा कि हमने नाम निहाद भारत का असल चेहरा दुनिया को दिखाया है क्योंकि एक वो चेहरा है जो भारत दुनिया को दिखाना चाहता है लेकिन असल चेहरा उससे बिल्कुल मुख्तलिफ है और वो चेहरा पाकिस्तान भारत का दुनिया के सामने ला रहा है और लाने की कोशिश कर रहा है इस हवाले से पाकिस्तान ने यके बाद दीगरे दीगर प्लेटफॉर्म्स के ऊपर अपनी आवाज को उठाया है और आज के इस डोजियर के अंदर भी जो भारत मकबूजा कश्मीर में जो जुल्म सतम के पहाड़ तोड़े हुए हैं उनके ऊपर एक पूरी दस्तावेज बनाई गई है एक पूरी रिपोर्ट तैयार की गई है जिसके जरिए भारत के एक मकरूह चेहरे को दुनिया के सामने लाने की पाकिस्तान की कोशिश है नाजीन इस मौके पर वजीर खारजा शाह महमूद कुरैशी का यह कहना था कि कश्मीर में जुल्म सतम के पहाड़ तोड़े जा रहे हैं और दुनिया के सामने हम वो चेहरा लेकर आना चाहते हैं उन्होंने साथ ही साथ ये भी कहा कि मकबूजा कश्मीर में भारतीय फोर्सेज के महासरे को सात सौ उनहत्तर दिन हो चुके हैं इस दौरान कश्मीर में मुसलसल मवासलाती रबता मुनकते हैं और कश्मीरियों के साथ उनकी उनके ऊपर बहुत सारे जुल्म सितम के पहाड़ तोड़े जा रहे हैं इस डोजियर में खवतन की बेहरमती का भी जिक्र है आज जो डोजियर पेश किया गया कश्मीर के हवाले से इस डोजियर में इस पैलेट गन्स के निशाना बनने वाले लोगों का भी जिक्र है खवतन की बेहरमती का जिक्र है इसमें कश्मीरियों पर होने वाले जुल्म मजालिम का जिक्र है भारत का वो चेहरा जो भारत दुनिया से छुपाता फिर रहा है उस चेहरे को दुनिया के सामने लाने की एक कोशिश है यह डोजियर जो आज तैयार किया गया उसके बाद जारी किया गया इस डोजियर के जरिए भारत के चेहरे को दुनिया के सामने लाने की पाकिस्तान की कोशिश है और आपको जैसा कि सबको ही पता है कि श्रीनगर में मुसलसल कर्फ्यू का नफाज है और भारत ने कश्मीर का जो मुहासरा किया हुआ है उसको सात सौ उनहत्तर दिन गुजर चुके हैं पैंतीस ए की मनसूखी को सात सौ उनहत्तर दिन गुजर चुके हैं कश्मीरियों पर होने वाले मजालिम के हवाले से आवाज पाकिस्तान ने हर प्लेटफॉर्म पर बुलंद की है इस, इस सारे अरसे के अंदर वजीर अजम इमरान खान कश्मीर के सफीर बनकर वो भी गए अकवा मुतहदा के प्लेटफॉर्म तक आवाज ले जाई गई इसके साथ साथ कश्मीर के हवाले से हर प्लेटफॉर्म पर पाकिस्तान अपनी आवाज को बुलंद कर रहा है और करता रहेगा इसी सिलसिले में वजीर खारजा शाह महमूद कुरैशी ने कहा कि हमने भारतीय सरकार के असल चेहरे को बेनखाब करना है और इसी सिलसिले में आज का जो डोजियर जारी किया गया है इस डोजियर के जरिए पाकिस्तान अपनी आवाज को हर प्लेटफॉर्म पर उठाना चाहता है चाहे वह अकवा मुतहदा का प्लेटफॉर्म हो चाहे वह आलमी बिरादरी को इस बात को बावर करवाना हो कि कश्मीरियों की इखलाकी और सिफारती जिदोजहद में पाकिस्तान हमेशा कश्मीरियों के साथ है इसी सिलसिले में वजीर खारजा शाह महमूद कुरैशी ने विफाखी वजीर बरए इंसानी हकूक डॉक्टर शीरी मजारी और मुशीर कौमी सलामती डॉक्टर मुईद यूसुफ ने आज प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस की और इस प्रेस कॉन्फ्रेंस में डोजियर भी जो है वो जारी किया गया है नाजिन ये थी पीटी पिता से तरीके